Hi everybody, um, welcome to um, this webinar on how to survive and thrive. I suppose my aim with this really was to help you guys pull together a sort of a proactive action plan for your business during this time um, and to talk about some things that we can do. So I'm just going to share my screen because I have a little um, slideshow that um, I'll sort of accompanied this and if anybody would like it. But can you see that okay? Gloria Gaynor, who knew? Yeah, I will survive. Okay. Um, <laughs> my sense of humour. First I was afraid I was petrified and then I met Paul Green and I was even more petrified. So anyway, <laughs> on. So, um, yeah, so let's talk about this because it's been, I don't know about you guys, but it's been a hell of a, a couple of weeks in my world with this and um, I've had to sort of take some time out and have a sit down and have a think about things. And, and what I'm about to share with you is kind of the way that I'm going to approach this. So I hope you'll find it useful. And oh, bear with me, bear with me. Right, here we go. So the first thing I want to talk about is you. Okay. Now, as I've said, um, I've had a really interesting two weeks um, in the business and mentally I've been from hell and back and, and beyond. Um, and I'm sure you guys have been as well. We're all, we're all in this together. I think the first thing I want to say to you for this particular thing is don't panic. It's very easy to get caught up in the panic and the hysteria of actually what is going on. And I think, um, you know, we're, as time keeps wearing on, um, we need to step back and just spend a bit of time letting the panic go and actually thinking about the future and our businesses and giving yourself time to evaluate, first of all, what has happened and to accept, and I'm the world's worst at this, that it's not your fault. And that's a big thing. It is not your fault. Um, and also to um, think about, give yourself time to think about and plan of actions coming through this. I think um, Paul was really, really quick for us to step in and start bringing us online networking and online webinars. And there's lots of stuff flying around. And, and for me, it kind of induced a bit of panic. So what I've actually done is I took a day and a half out and just took a step back and thought, right, you know, come on, let's just get some sense and sensibility into this and start thinking about a plan. Business will return. Business will evolve. Business is, is, um, is very pliable and, you know, um, we're learning um, to run businesses, to be in businesses in, um, I told you you'd make a, a, a Hello, Alfie. We're learning to evolve businesses and run businesses in, in somewhere where we haven't got a rule book. But business is very, um, you know, tough. It will hang in there. We've also got to accept that your business might evolve and the way we've done business might not necessarily be the way that we're going to be doing business going forward. So again, it's kind of taking yourself through that mental sort of preparation for this. And also is allow yourself some time during this pro process to work on your business and to plan. And I know that sometimes is, is um, more difficult than it actually seems because if we've got worry about finances and we've got worry about, you know, how we're going to pay the bills and the mortgages, etc., then that can compound things. But I think when we're in business, it's absolutely key that we sit down and we have some sort of plan of attack and planning process in. So what I'm about to share with you now is kind of like the things that um, I'm going through and what I'm looking at. <laughs> so the first thing I sort of, oh, here we go. Some slides here, um, just to step back and tink, not think. <laughs> Good job, Stephen um, Church isn't on this one. So <laughs> let's look at some um, existing customers. Um, and this is kind of the first place I want to start with. Um, you know, <laughs> this is a time where we need to be reaching out to them via the telephone. They need to know that you're still there. There are going to be a lot of businesses that have shut up the doors and locked the doors and walked away. I sent out a mail shot um, to a number of prospective business. I'll talk about sort of marketing a little bit later. Um, and um, 
it was really amazing the number of out of offices that came back to me which actually said we're closed for business until after the crisis has ended and i just sat there and went what <laughs> i know it's beyond me so i think you know your customers it's a really good time to reach out to them to let them know that you are still there and that you can be relied upon in this crisis um, because they're going to be wanting your help. Um, you know, for example, Margot, services that you provide are very key. Pam, the sort of services that you're going to be providing are very key. Shannon, chocolate cake, going to be important. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a recipe. So, you know, it's, it's letting people know that you are still there. And this is a really, really good time to strengthen these relationships and to ask them how they're getting on, what's happening with them. Um, it's, it's going <coughs> to be that these sorts of phone calls that are going to be remembered. I think in a webinar um, last week, Paul, I think, you know, your actions of, of what are you doing today are going to be remembered when we come out of this, good or bad. Um, but let's give these existing customers a positive um, message that we are interested in them and we want to support them. Offer them help. Don't push any sales. This is not the time to be push, push sales. I'm going to deal with how we get some revenue in a little while. Um, and also, you know, what instant solutions can you give them? Um, you know, is there something that you can do to help? That is an instant solution. Some of it might be free. Some of it you might be able to offer a small charge for, and they'll be happy to pay that. But I think the most thing is, is, is really sort of um, <coughs> understanding that they can reach you, that you're there. Um, and keeping those relationships actually going. I'm just kind of referring to some of my notes. Um, also let them know how they can reach you. Make sure they've got all your contact details, your email addresses, whatever it is. If you're working from home, you know, again, it's just confirming all of that up with them. That is absolutely key. So this is the first point of time is your existing customers, talk to them. The second thing I am going to suggest that you do is go back to people that you were engaging with before the crisis hit and anybody that you've got quotes out with or good conversations that you've been having with them about prospective business. Because this is again a good time to revisit them and strengthen those relationships. We're probably not going to get any business. We might do, you never know. Um, but it, just having those conversations, not from a when are you going to buy from me, but what can we do to help you sort of basis will stand you in good stead. Um, yeah, see how they are. What can you do to help them? It's all going to stand you in good stead when we come out of this. You know, they're, um, they're all in the same situation as you are. It's sharing, it's sharing that um, experience and sharing that bond and just keeping in touch with them as well. And also, most importantly, Again, if your services are something that they are going to be thinking about that they need, I'm going to talk to you about sort of, uh, what you can offer people as we come out of this. If it's something that they're going to need when they come out of this. Um, it's also, you know, letting them know that you are still around, you are still open for business and that you are still there. So very, very key. Help don't sell. And I think this is a big message that I keep coming through. So I apologize if I'm repeating myself on this, but I can't say it enough at this point in time. So let's talk about marketing. I know those of you that have been on webinars with Paul, we've had big discussions with this and it is absolutely key. Those businesses that shut up shop and walk away are going to have a big problem when we come back into the real world um, and the life starts up again. You know, even when um, I'm talking about sales planning, um, I talk about, you know, Activities we do today can breed results in about two months time. Okay, so we're in a different world at the moment. That length of time might be elongated. Um, but if you just imagine, if you don't do any activity in the businesses that you've had, how quickly that catches up with you. So you can imagine what's going to happen when the tap can't turns on again and we start, um, you know, business starts moving again. Your marketing is absolutely key. Um, Make it solution driven. 
not about, again, buy me. It's thinking about your marketplace, who you're talking to um, and what they're going to need. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. You know, it doesn't have to cost money. Again, we're all sitting here and conserving um, the pennies. Social media. I know Pam was running offers of 100 free places to people that signed up. Um, Pam, are you still running those? She's muted. <laughs> She's muted. Sorry, I'm muted because my dog was barking. Um, yeah, I think we're we're up at 80 something yeah. now. So there's still there's some places, yeah. Still some places there. Um, but, you know, the, the guys at Green Umbrella, there's so much advice that they give out over their um, websites and webinars and things that they're doing. You know, goodness sake, go in and learn from it. Um, because, you know, social media is something that, yes, we're using it to keep in contact with friends and, you know, share some funnies and, and keep our morale up, but also um, we can still use it to communicate with, with customers and prospective customers. So, you know, it's free. All it does is going to take your time. Um, the other thing that um, think about is, you know, solutions that you can help people with through this um and also um networking so paul has done a fantastic job in allowing us to um come online and network but his is not the only networking um business that is doing this sorry paul rude. Um, very, very rude. i know <laughs> i know and he's gonna hate me for it however um you know let's make use of it if people are offering you to go online and do some networking, then just absolutely do it. So it's keeping that name out there. Think about, you know, when you first started your businesses. I know myself, when I first started my business, I would go to the opening of an envelope if I thought I could meet somebody and, eat and get some food. Now, obviously, we can't eat in this, well, you can, I suppose, in your own table. Um, but meeting people, you know, um, learning about their businesses, laying down the foundations for when we come out of this, it's going to be a good thing to do. So marketing, just keep doing it. Um, those of you that know Jessica Shales, um, I'm, I'm, she's done a marketing webinar, Paul, hasn't she? Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, she's also doing a really good series of, of crisis communication marketing. I was a guest on there yesterday. So again, seek out, learn things from, from people like her because this is going to be also really helpful for you and your business. So I also want to move on to referral partners. It's a real pity that Jackie's not on with us unless she snuck in um, because um, this is Jackie's territory, but referral partners um, are individuals that share the same databases, client bases as yourself, and, uh, but have possibly different or will have different um, services or products they provide, but putting together a, a series of referral partners to help each other in business is going to help you go forward. So if you've already working with referral partners, you've got them, you understand what they are, then you know this is a really, really good time to, to start getting those one-to-ones in place and communicating with those people how you can help them. Um, yeah, how you can help them. If you haven't and you don't have any, now, now's a great time to set these up. Jackie is running a Elevate Your Referrals with Ease workshop on the 7th of April. Um, I believe she has sent out an email um, with a link on this. And if you haven't been on it, now is the time because referral partners can absolutely revol revolutionise your business um, and really help you. So um, do, do absolutely think about that. Has somebody raised a question because something was flashed on my screen? No, no one's been flashing you, Julie. Oh, no, I was just recommending Jackie's workshop. Oh, well done. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really good one to achieve. So referral partners. Yeah, let's get those things in place. Mm. Oh, hold on. Um, yeah, and if you don't know how to do this, speak to Jackie Sherman. Shameless pug for Jackie. So... Now what I want to start talking about is how we can start looking at our own business. So we've talked about your existing customers, referral partners, hmm. um, we've looked at sort of your quotes. Now what I want to sort of take you through is 
you taking some time to actually step back and look at your business. Now, um, I want to talk about target market. And there's two things I sort of want to put on the table right now is target market now and target market in the future. Target market now um, is reviewing who you have been working with and who are in your sort of customer remit and are they still relevant? And with this, um, what I mean by still relevant is, um, are they the sorts of markets that possibly could bring you some revenue stream at this point in time? Um, those of you that were online yesterday with, in Daventry, we were talking, I was talking about pivoting your business and just having a good think about um, who within your target market, your sector is currently busy. So for example, one of my clients that I've been working with um, manufactures labels for food and they've been quite busy and we've been doing some projects in that which has still got the odd little thing bubbling through. Um, do you have somebody in your target market that is still busy that you supply into, that you could offer support to? Um, so it's absolutely sort of thinking about who you're working with and if you're unsure about um, sort of how to analyze your target market one of the best exercises is look at who you've invoiced over the past year 18 months and pull out the industry sectors and the type of businesses in that and that'll give you a really really good indication I did that a few years ago um, and actually got a real interesting um, anomaly I seem to be do I used to seem to do an awful lot with manufacturing and engineering companies which was really quite a surprise to me but that actually helped me when I was targeting other companies because I have that experience of training in that sector. So it's, it's thinking about that. So that's your kind of your here and now. But when you're also planning, think about your future target market, as in who's going to need your help when the real world starts to come back together and how um, are they going to need that? And I'll talk about sort of your offering in a minute. Because um, if we've got an, an understanding or an indication of, you know, the target market that might come back on first, and I know a lot of that could be just licking your finger and sticking it in the air a little bit, but, um, you know, um, for my target market, for example, if you think about I've got telemarketing, I've got sales uh, training and recruitment and consultancy, in sort of my brain, I thought, well, what's going to happen when people start coming back online? Well, the first thing they're going to need is they're going to go hell bent on actually sales. So they might be looking at sales training and they might be looking at telesales. Recruitment might come online a little bit later, but those are the two arenas that are going to be quite um, busy. And so those are the two arenas that who is going to be my target market in those. And it's that sort of thing that you can even start doing <coughs> some sort of marketing, communicating with at this point, getting yourself ready for that particular time. So there's your target market. Now the same is really in about your offering as in your product, your service. It's, this is the time to sit down and take a good, long, hard look at what you're, what you're offering and what your service is for the now. What can you change? What can you adapt? What could people, with at this point in time how could people use your services at the moment um how could you adapt that so um let's think let's think let's think um i'm going to pick on charles here sort of for the photography normally photography charles is something that you would do stood in a room with other people but is there something that possibly you might be able to help and support people to come up with, I don't know, online gift um, cards um, that when um, we all come back online is the whole family gets together and celebrates, you know, that, that first time they were getting together. Is that a gift voucher that you could possibly offer? Is that an idea that you could come up with? Could they um, take a family photo and send it to you and you pull together a, um, a card or an e-card that you could send to somebody. I, I'm, I'm brainstorming, I'm trying to come up with some different ideas, but if you, if you see where I'm coming from, um, you know, it's, it's 
it, it is sometimes being completely off the wall. Um, you know, Shannon, where are you? I, I kind of, you know, at the moment, for example, um, you know, you, you're doing catering has fallen off a cliff. But, you know, is there a service that you could offer people with um, online cookery? You know, you've got five basic ingredients in your fridge. What the hell are you going to do with it? And this is something that you might be able to do here and now. Yeah, thank you. Um, so it's kind of thinking about, and the most off the wall things sometimes, um, you know, you laugh at them, but you actually come back to them and you say, oh, okay, you know, um, what, um, what can we actually um, do? So um, <clears throat> the other thing that I want to talk about is your offering, your services in the future. So we've talked about your future target market. Who could they be? What is your offering when they come back online? How can you make that happen? OK, so um, what is it you can do to help them get back into business? Um, how are they going to use and need your product or services to help them get back into business? Um, and again, it's think outside the box. How can you adapt? You know, it might be that, as I said, you might not get any business now, but if you're starting to think about things as they come, as we come back online, you've already thought about <coughs> it and can switch on your marketing. That is going to help these leads come through. So here's some, so here's sort of some, some ideas. It's, it's the most, sometimes the most off the wall, um, the most craziest can be something that will get you through. So those, um, some ideas about sort of target market and offering. And oh, hold on. See people are putting things in chat. Is there is there any questions? I'll, I'll keep an eye on that, Julie. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, fine. All right. Um, so the last sort of um, thing is um, what else can we do? Now the reason there's a picture of George Clooney up there is because when you Google what else question mark and images, he comes up. I think yeah, it's right. to do with an espresso brand. But anyway, it was my presentation. I like him, so you've got him. <laughs> very, I think that's very sexist, Julie, to be honest. I'm okay with that today. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if a picture of a lady had come up, you'd have had that. But it's George Clooney. So here we go. So what else can you do um, during these times? Well, look, if you came on here expecting me to wave a magic wand and tell you um, you're going to make a million pounds in sales during time I'm, I'm sorry that's not what oh. i can do and oh, no. um that's if i was doing it then obviously i would share with you um i think um this is also a very very good time to sit down and look at improving your own skill set to um as you guys are doing is come on to webinars and expand your knowledge it's to think about your business think about what you want your business to look like when you come out and use the advice that we've got in this webinar today to help that. Um, learn how to present online. I, I'm a member of a, an international sales training panel and we had a webinar um, uh, Monday of last week and, and um, that is out on YouTube somewhere. Um, but um, one of the things that came out of that that we thought were skill sets that are going to be useful in the world going forward is we all felt that this way of working, this online way of working, is going to be something that we think will still continue. We've used it for so long and I think we've all... Oh, hello. I got my fact there. Um, but we all think that this is something that is going to continue. And one of the recommendations that we've all sort of came up with is actually learn to engage more online, learn the skills that would help you with this, not presentation skills. It's almost like Zoom etiquette and how to make the most of that. Now, Paul, um, I don't know whether you've had any ideas on this for somebody to do a webinar on it, but it might be something that would be useful um, because it is a skill set and um, learning how to talk to new prospects or to existing customers more online, I think it's something that can be quite useful. Well, I think Sue Garner's on the uh, call, so we might hear from her later, because I think she's putting something together about how to make an effective uh, uh, Zoom video. So Brilliant. she might have something to say in a minute. So Brilliant. Is that you basically done, shall I get you out of sharing now? Are you done with your slide? Um, 
can I can I just finish what I've got to say then first? You, yes, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just checking. God forbid. Have you had enough of me already, Paul? Come on, crack on, Futcher. So, so to to finalise before Paul actually cut me off. Um, look, these these are some ideas that I had. I hope that you found them useful. Um, it is a very, very bizarre time we find ourselves in. And for me as a sales trainer, it is even more bizarre because, you know, normally it's kind of, ah, right, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to make money. Um, but we're in a time where nobody's in those positions to do this. So I think it's planning, it's thinking about the future, it's keeping you, you know, your your reputation going it's engaging with these customers all of these things are going to really really help you i think the last thing i want to put on the table is keep that attitude strong because um with this positive attitude and i know it's very difficult on times and this is why again i also find um that these webinars and things are useful is because um, you know, it can slip, you can find that you become disheartened, but you know, we keep a positive attitude, we can do this and your business will survive. So there we go. That's all I've got to say. Paul, you may take over. Fabulous. Um, so if anybody's got any questions, the easiest way is to digitally raise your hand, wave frantic the camera and hope I see it, or type something in the uh, chat box. If you've muted yourself, then make sure you uh, uh, unmute yourself, or if I've muted you, I'll try and unmute you. Uh, uh, Alan's either waving to all of us or he's got a question. Alan, the floor is yours. I did just, just to reinforce what, what Julie said, and thank you very much for that, Julie. I mean, I, you know, people who know me will know I spent 35 years in the insolvency profession, and I went through three recessions, and there are always opportunities when you are coming out of a recession, and those that are ahead of the curve curve sorry are the ones that are going to be able to take advantage of those opportunities so it's absolutely vital to have all your ducks in a row before this thing starts getting better so as julie said you know, get your marketing right get your branding right da, 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 da. get your strategy get your business strategy write it down have a proper plan and so that when the little triggers kick in like we know when we can start traveling again um we know when the kids are going back to school and so on and so forth you can then start rolling out those initiatives uh, and, and take advantage of it. And frankly, there are going to be businesses that fall over because that's what happens. But they're going to leave business behind. And it's the people who are ahead of the curve, they're going to, I said curve again, curve, that are going to pick that business up. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate the uh, input. Uh, anybody else, any questions or uh, comments they want to make? Just wanted to say that was really helpful, Julie. Thank you. You're welcome. And yeah, Pascal approves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What have you got there? Who's Pascal? Uh, oh, a chameleon! Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> he's doing his drunk baby mode. I can spot go. him for the first time ever. Yay! <laughs> a, bit, a bit too much of a chameleon that I wanted to see, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Stu, as you're on the call, did you want? I, th I believe you're looking at putting something together on helping people do effective Zoom calls. Did you want to say something on that while people are here? Yeah, I mean, I actually I've put together a, a 14 slide um, PDF. So actually, I was just going to offer it out to people um, if it would be helpful for them. Um, it will probably take you about you know five ten minutes to go through but it it talks about a lot of the etiquette um not just with zoom but any of the the virtual platforms that you use um you know and also some of these skills as julie quite rightly said you know it's a different skill when you're trying to facilitate a, a remote call um you know as if you were in the room with someone so again if it's something helpful um, you know i'm really happy you know i can sort of email that out to people if they'd like that yeah. Um, and equally, if you want me to do something, Paul, you know, that links in with that as a short webinar um, and goes into a little bit more detail with that, I'm happy to do that as well, if it would be yeah. helpful for people. Yeah, I think that could be helpful, yeah, in these, these current times. Uh, any questions for Julie? I've got one, Julie. Pricing. What should people be doing with their pricing strategy? Oh, this is a really interesting one, isn't it? Um, so I think um, having gone through the recession, 
in recruitment. Um, this is one where ordinarily in, in normal times, I say, don't drop your prices, don't drop your pants. Okay. You know, but we are in dif different times now. I think um, I would still sell on value. I would still try and keep your prices where they can. But this is the time to be very prepared for people wanting to negotiate. And this is the time where, do you know what, you have to balance um, you have to balance money coming in and paying the bills versus, um, you know, holding your ground. Um, in the recession, I were, we had to negotiate in recruitment. We had to, to stay alive. But what we did was, if we dropped our prices, we tried to get something back. It's what I call trade variables. So, um, for example, um, we would ask for sole supplier on a vacancy if we drop the prices. Um, so think about what you can use to trade off. Um, it might be that you want to drop your prices a little bit just to get a pickup on some things. It could be you offer something, uh, you know, uh, free and then offer um, something paid for to continue on with what you're doing, but a reduced cost. Um, people understand during these times um, where everybody's at, and I think we're all in a, a, a time where, you know, if you want to pay for something, we all also understand that people need to make money, but um, we also understand where our customers are at. So, yeah, um, that's kind of my thoughts. It was a long-winded way of going around things. Sorry. That's okay. I'm sure it looked good on the uh, recording. So um, the other thing I was going to say, which we have touched on, which you sort of like touched on earlier in the presentation, um, is obviously be appropriate in terms of what you're pushing out there um, uh, and not to profiteer, I guess. Yeah, this is an interesting one of profiteering, isn't it? Um, because, again, I think we had the discussion about you know, you do need to make, you, you do try and make some money because you're still in business and you've got to pay your bills. But I think it's how it's done. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of something that happened to me. So um, about a week or so ago, I'd gone through the finances and, you know, I decided to cut out the non-essential expenditure. And it meant letting one of the groups that I'd been thinking about letting go anyway. We hadn't had a lot of business from it, so I let it go. Um, now, we had a phone call from the people. I'd wrote to them, explained the situation, told them I cancelled the standing order and, um, you know, apologised. And I had a phone call from them and um, obviously very devastated that I was leaving the group. But just to remind me that there's a three month contract to quit. And when I sort of said, well, I'm really sorry, but, you know, this is my situation. I've, we, you know, I'm having to conserve money or pay staff. Um, there, well, we can we can drop it to a week then, but you are in contract, which was at that point in time. I very kindly pointed out that if they wanted to take me to court, I'm more than happy to see them there and kind of put the phone down on them. That sort of approach is not something that um, I want to go back to that organisation. And to me, that was somebody who was profiteering in a situation and trying to bully boy their their way into getting it. If they'd have phoned and said, "Look, we understand." What can we do to help you is you know if we if we help you for over this couple of months and we kind of back end your payments how would that be it's a slightly different thing it's a slightly different way of doing it yeah so I, think, I think it's how it's done and it's how that conversation goes yeah I think hearing, to me is you have a service or something that no people need in these times and you put your prices up yeah I think contracts are contracts and they're obviously valuable uh, during normal times, but I think yeah. people need to be flexible. You know, I've had a number of exa examples uh, uh, recently where if, if you took it to the letter of the contract, you would probably end up pissing that potential future prospect yeah. off. So, so I think it's, 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 being a, it's being balanced about yeah. it, isn't it? And sort of thinking how you'll come out the other side. So it's just having that, that flexibility. But prof yeah, but profiteering is what we've seen, for example, um, you know, those of you that have been on Facebook on some of these little shops that have been selling rolls of toilet roll at twelve ninety nine and hand sanitizers yeah, yeah. at twenty five ninety nine. That's taking the mickey. And I think what we've got to sort of if you are offering a service, my first thought is what would you charge for it in a normal world? Is that a reasonable amount of money 
to ask. Um, and if it is and it's right, then fine. But if you're unsure, being a member of the business community and popping a, an, um, an, in, an email around to all of us asking, is this a fair price? Can anybody help me with this? I'm sure we would all give you a, an honest answer. Yeah, I think so. I think so.